I'm a very big fan of using AC, agonist contract stretching technique, for neck stretching, for range of motion, flexibility for the neck. And for many years, I performed it the way most people performed it, and that was to do one cardinal plane range of motion at a time. So for example, in the transverse plane, there's left rotation and right rotation, and I would do a number of repetitions for left rotation, and then a number of repetitions for right rotation. So let's show one or two repetitions for left, then one or two for right. Catherine, take a breath in. And as you breathe out, rotate to the left. Go, go, go. At the end, relax. Finish breathing out, and I'll stretch you a bit more. Breathe in as I bring you back to starting position. Breathe out as you rotate left again. Go, go, go. At the end, relax. Finish breathing out as I stretch you more, and I'll bring you back to starting position. Rest there. And I would do the typical 8 to 10 repetitions. And at the end, I would see that I had gained range of motion, flexibility for the client, whatever it was, 5, 10, 15 degrees. And I was very happy with that progress. Then I would do right rotation agonist contract stretching. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, rotate to the right. Go, go, go. At the end, relax. Finish breathing out as I stretch you more. Take another breath in as I bring you back. Breathe out to the right. Rotate, at the end relax, finish breathing out as I stretch you more, and go back and rest here for a moment. And at the end of 8 to 10 repetitions for right rotation, I would then check and see that I had gained flexibility for her into right rotation. And I performed it this way for many years, and then one day I happened to just go back and check and see, well I remember I gained a certain flexibility for left rotation at the end of the agonist contract for that range of motion. And I noticed that after having done the right rotation, I had lost some of the progress I had made with left rotation. So I've developed a, a different type of protocol for using agonist contract stretching when I'm doing either the rotation stretches or the lateral flexion stretches. To show this with the rotation stretches, what I will do is instead of doing all left, then all right, or for that matter, all right, then all left, I would alternate between the two. So, Catherine, take a breath in. And as you breathe out, rotate left. Go, 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 go. At the end, relax. Finish breathing out as I stretch you a bit more. Take a breath in in this position. And now breathe out and rotate right. Go ahead. Go, 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 go. At the end, relax. Finish breathing out as I stretch you more here. Now in this position, take a breath in. And now rotate left. Go, go, go. At the end, relax. Finish breathing out. I'll stretch you more. Breathe in here. Now breathe out. And rotate right, go, 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 at the end relax, finish breathing out, and I'll stretch you more. And you can just rest right here in neutral position. So a different variation on the protocol for agonist contract stretching when you're either doing transverse plane rotation stretching or frontal plane lateral flexion stretching is instead of doing all to one side, then all to the other, Try alternating and going back and forth between the two. And what I found is at the end, I've maintained the progress for both the left rotation and right rotation, or in the case of frontal plane, the left lateral flexion and the right lateral flexion. Give this a try in your practice and see how it works for you with your patients or clients. If you liked this video, know that it is part of our video streaming subscription service. Click the link below for more information and receive a free ebook when you sign up.